What's up guys? Today we're going to be checking out the new motion series from Martin Logan. What we have here are the Motion 40i towers. Handling dialog is the 30i center channel. And we also have two pairs of motion eyes for the surround and back channels. So let's get them unboxed and hooked up. First up are the new 40i's. These guys retail for $1200 each at the time of this video. Inside, we get the smaller upper grill and a second larger grill that covers the lower part of the speakers. The outgoing models had one long metallic grill. These newer ones have a lighter weight plastic. Now these new models aren't too different from the older ones. There are two 6.5 inch aluminum cone woofers, a 5.5 inch mid-range driver, and a folded motion tweeter. Response is rated at 40,000 to 25,000 Hz. The tweeter also has an 80 degree dispersion vertically and horizontally. Size wise they measure 42.5 inches high, by 7.6 inches wide, by 12.8 inches deep, and they weigh 49 pounds each. Build quality wise they have a solid cabinet, and the finish that we have here is their glossy black. Yes, it is a fingerprint magnet. Around back, we have custom 5-way bi-wire toolless binding posts, and the port is located at the bottom. Next up is the 30i center channel. This retails for $850 at the time of this video. Inside we have the magnetic grill, and here we have some documentation, and these little rubber pads to stick on the bottom of the speaker. That's so you don't scratch the paint job. Size wise, they measure 6.9 inches high, by 16.5 inches wide, by 10.5 inches deep, and it weighs 18 pounds. The 30i has the same 5.5 inch mid-range as the 40i's, and the same folded motion tweeter. So they are timbre matched, and should provide for some nice audio panning up front. Frequency response is rated at 65 to 25,000 hertz. Around the back is the port and a set of binding posts. This isn't by wireable like the towers. And finally, we have the Motion 4 eyes. These retail for 250 each at the time of this video. Here we have some documentation and a cleaning cloth. We also get some wall mounting hardware. Now these have the older style metal grills, so aesthetically they won't match the front three speakers. They have the same 1 inch folded motion tweeter as the other speakers and a 4 inch paper cone woofer. I also forgot to mention all of these speakers have an impedance of 4 ohms. Build wise they have a curvaceous look. You can mount them in any orientation with the included wall bracket. They're fairly compact, measuring 6.6 .6 inches high by 5.6 inches wide by 7.7 .7 inches deep and they weigh only 6 pounds each. Around back we have push style connectors that will accept banana plugs and the port is located back here as well. For setup, I'll be hooking these guys up to the Emotiva XMC2 powered by a trio of Rotel amplifiers. These are going to be replacing my Rendell Sound speakers, which I'll be using as my reference point for this video. I'll also be using a pair of RHEL 1508 subwoofers for some of my listening. Now since this is only a 7 channel setup, I won't be doing any listening in Dolby Atmos or DTS-X since I don't have matching height speakers. Alright, now if you follow any of my home theater speaker reviews, you'll know one of my go-to's is A Quiet Place on 4K Blu-ray. I love using this movie to hear those subtle atmospheric sound effects. First thing that struck me was how clean all these speakers sounded together. Having all the same tweeters gave my theater a sweet sounding uniform soundstage. The opening chapter of this movie switches between the interior of an abandoned building, then outside into a deserted town. I found that coming from my normal speakers that, while yes, there was a cohesiveness audibly between the Martin Logans, that there was a level of airiness or spaciousness that I was missing. If I listened carefully, I could get the sensation that I was inside this empty store, but I did have to listen for that slight echo or the more nuanced sound effects. The same for when the characters go outside. I could hear the wind blowing or the rustle of leaves moving through the streets, and yes, it did create a convincing outside effect but I still felt the soundstage was more pulled inwards and shallower sounding than I'm used to hearing. If I had to characterize it, I'd say these speakers are more forward sounding than my normal speakers and they're also a bit warm sounding. And being warm isn't a bad thing, 
and just felt there was a little missing on the top end. Now to test out if these guys were more forgiving on the high side, I threw in the movie Fury on 4K Blu-ray. There's a couple scenes where Bernthal's character screams out after blowing up the tank and a couple other times during the movie. During these moments, the center channel can sound somewhat harsh, especially at higher volumes. With the 30i handling center channel duty, the harshness was almost nullified and made for a lot easier listening at reference levels. The same can be said about the tank battles. When the action starts up, all that tank fire can be hard on the ears. I thought the warmer nature of these speakers was definitely less ear piercing or rather less fatiguing than other speakers that I've heard. So that means longer listening sessions at higher volumes without having to keep messing with the volume control. I should also mention that the Motion 40 eyes did a commendable job at handling the side and back surrounds. As mentioned during the tank shootouts, the tank fire sounded fantastic as they moved from speaker to speaker. <laughs> Front to back pans and left to right pans were spot on. I also noticed how well the tweeters were at throwing sounds upwards, making sounds appear as if they were coming from the center of my projection screen. That's nearly two and a half feet above the left and right speaker cabinets. The surrounds also created an overhead phantom effect, which made me double check to see if my height speakers were active. All those plain flyovers sounded excellent. Of course, proper speaker placement helps. If there was one thing I felt was lacking with the surround speakers, I thought they weren't quite as dynamic as the front three channels. I know these are the surround speakers, so you can kind of get away with using smaller ones, but being used to having much larger speakers on my side and back walls, I have heard in some surround mixes that there have been an ample amount of bass and an ample amount of mid-range. The four eyes were just lighter sounding than I would have liked. I think pairing the front three speakers with the new Motion 15 eyes would have blended in better. And they also have a five and a quarter inch driver, which would more closely match the other speakers rather than the four inch ones in the four eyes. I'm not saying the four eyes are bad or anything, because they are just as detailed on the upper end as the other speakers. I just feel that moving up to the next level would have made more sense. Now for everything that I've mentioned so far, I was running everything full range, so all the speakers were set as large, and I wasn't running any subwoofers. I wanted to test how dynamic the entire system was on the high end and on the bottom end. And speaking of the bottom end, the Motion 40i's did a standout job working without a subwoofer. All that tank fire and fury was surprisingly robust for such slim towers. Obviously the 40i's aren't going to go infrasonic and move your pant legs, but that mid-bass area was more than enough to shake my theater. And I gotta say, I did do most of my listening without a subwoofer. If you're a bass junkie and need that edge of tomorrow low-end response, then sure, go ahead and add a sub. But I felt that the bass was fast and had a really good palpable feel. The spaceship takeoff during Interstellar was a knockout with these speakers. As for the center channel, I felt there was a clean blend with the left and rights, but since I was running it as large, there were some disconnects when something bass heavy would pan across the front stage. If I was running with my subwoofers active, then I didn't have any issues. The 30i handles vocals perfectly fine with a good chesty response. And of course, the folded motion tweeter gives it that warm, sweet detail. So all in, this system is gonna run you about 4,300 bucks. If you've seen any of my home theater speaker reviews, then you probably know I personally own a couple pairs of Martin Logans myself that I bought and paid for. I guess you could say I'm a fan. If I didn't think these speakers would sound good, I wouldn't have done this review. The new Motion series, they're a legit speaker. I'm now a fan of these 40i mini towers. They kind of took me by surprise at how dynamic they sound. They can play ridiculously loud without breaking apart up top. And the amount of bass these little guys can belt out might be enough to use alone without a subwoofer if you've got a conservatively sized home theater space. Obviously, if you've got a bigger space, you can always grab one of their Dynamo subs. But like I said earlier, I did a lot of my listening without a subwoofer and I thought they performed fantastically. Sure, I thought there could have been a little more transparency, but given the performance per price, I'm not all that upset. I think the pairing with the 30i center channel and the 4i surrounds gave me an awesome performing surround sound experience. Once I had the system dialed in with all my subwoofers, I was able to alleviate some of the holes that I was hearing. I still think using the new 15i's would have been a better pairing, giving the system a better synergy, but I can see how the 4i's would integrate better with some listening spaces, since they are super easy to just mount on a wall, so there's always that. Now I think if you're coming from the older models, I'm not so sure if these new ones are going to blow your socks off. I've heard the older ones many times because I got a buddy of mine who actually owns some 40s and 20s, but just by memory, I'm thinking they sound kind of the same. I didn't do a side-by-side -side comparison, so you can take that with a grain of salt. Anyways, if you're thinking of doing a system upgrade and you want to try something new, I would highly recommend you give the new 40i and 30i a listen. They're detailed, kind of warm sounding I thought, have a punchy mid-range, and those towers can go pretty low. 
So if you've got a shop nearby, then do yourself a favor and give these new guys a listen. Well, those are my thoughts on these speakers. If you guys have heard them or if you actually own them, then let me know what you think of them in the comments down below. I'll leave some links in the video description if you want to check out some more specs or if you want to pick them up. As always, thanks for watching, follow us on social media, and if you want to support the channel and get exclusive updates and giveaways, then stop by our Patreon page. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys again in the next one.